Woohoo! Welcome back. Tonight we're going to be talking about ellipses. Yay! And the first thing we need to ask her is what the heck is an ellipse? And basically, an ellipse is a shape that looks like it started out trying to be a circle, but got a little bit wonky and stretched in one direction. And the two that we're going to be studying in this section are going to be the one, the type that got stretched horizontally, and I'm calling that a bathtub ellipse just for me so I can remember. And there's the other type that got stretched in the vertical direction, and I'm going to call that a shower ellipse. Basically, in both of these cases, we have got a formula that has an x squared and a y squared, and they're possibly with numbers in front of them or numbers below them. So we've got coefficients, but we've got x squared and y squared, and we've got a plus in the middle, and that's going to be really important. Now, the way the book does this, it swaps a squared and b squared depending on which one is bigger. So let's talk about these two uh, possibilities. This first one where you see it stretched out horizontally, this is going to be the case where x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. And in this case, this point, this is a um, an ellipse centered around the origin. This will be right here. This is a vert vertex or these are the vertices. This is gonna be the point a comma zero. This is going to be the point, the opposite of a comma zero. Up here, this is gonna be zero comma b. And down here, this is zero, the opposite of b. Now, the way that your book um, addresses it is that it goes ahead and says, you know what, let's just keep the a as the bigger one. So when it's stretched up like this, so it looks more like a shower, We've got x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals one. Again, we've got x and y both are squared. We've got a plus in the middle, but the vertices to the top and the bottom are gonna be zero comma a and zero the opposite of a. And then here on the x-axis, we're gonna have b zero and the opposite of b zero. And uh, these basically um, look a lot like and act a lot like a circle. And in fact, a circle is just a special case of an ellipse. So I do have one question. I've, I've put out all of these lovely formulas and details here that we can take a closer look at. But I did ask one question on that first page, which is what happens when A equals B? And when A equals B, if you look at the graphs of both, regardless of which one we're talking about, if A and B are the same, so we, we bring A in here or in this way, when A equals B, you get X squared over A squared plus Y squared over A squared equals one. So in other words, oops, you can't see that. Let me scooch it up x squared plus y squared equals a squared. That is, oh my goodness, everything is just dancing around tonight. These are both examples of a circle. So a circle is a special case of an ellipse, just like a square is a special case of a rectangle. And so how are we gonna recognize this? Well, let's take a look at the example that I have and we can talk about what's going on. So we have an example that's written in a kind of an interesting way. This does not have any numbers in the denominator, not like this does. Um, so let's take a look at how we can know what's going on or even recognize this as an ellipse. So first off, you'll notice the only variables are x squared and y squared, nothing else. And we've got the x squared term added to the y squared term. That is going to tell you you have an ellipse or possibly a special case of a circle. What a lot of people would do at this point, if you've got an equation written this way, 
go ahead and divide out whatever this constant is on the right side. So I'm going to divide everybody by 100. So I've got 4x squared over 100 plus 25y squared over 100 equals 100 over 100. So everybody gets divided by 100. And so then this cancels. I get x squared over 25 plus y squared over 4, and that's equal to 1. Now, a lot of times what you may want to do to be able to use the formulas more smoothly, you don't have to do this, you may want to rewrite this as x squared over 5 squared plus y squared over 2 squared equals 1. Um, because a and b are going to be written as squares. Now, how do we know which case is the case we're in? And what we know here is if you look at the denominators, the bigger denominator, so here, the 25, which is larger than 4, that means that it gets fatter in the x direction. So this is going to be a bathtub type. I've invited Spider to join us because, well, Spider reminds me a lot of an ellipse. But this would be the case where Spider is sleeping. So this is a sleeping spider, right? There we go. There's that, there's that uh, ellipse shape. Now, what if the number underneath y squared had been bigger? If that's the case, then we'd be in this situation. But right now, we're here. So let's take a look at what the vertices would be. If you have 25 written as 5 squared and 4 written as 2 squared, it's pretty straightforward to find the vertices. The vertices are just going to be, and again, this is going to be a sketch, but I've got the points negative 5 and 5 on the x-axis, and 2 and negative 2 on the y-axis. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with anyone who's able to make their ellipses look like something other than a football that's starting to deflate. That is that is literally my best attempt at an ellipse. Um, as you can see, I think Spider did a pretty good job, so maybe I'll just put Spider here instead. Um, so the x in the x direction on each side to the left and the right, that's going to be the number underneath x squared. And the numbers top and bottom are going to be the numbers underneath the y squared. So my vertices are uh, negative 5, 0, 5, 0, 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. So that's the first part. Now, second, the foci. The foci are the numbers. Um, they're like the focus in a parabola. Um, it turns out that an ellipse is, and we talked about this in class, but basically an ellipse is the set of points whose <laughs> the sum of the distance so if you have a focus here and another focus there, and you take the distance and you add these distances together, they stay constant. So in other words, you could take a string and wrap it around the two foci and then pull it out and you would draw an ellipse. Now, the cool thing is, is it turns out if it is a circle, what happens is the whole thing collapses, and instead of having two foci, you just have one center. So that's kind of cool. So the foci, you can see, we can look at our handy dandy list of all of the interesting details. The foci happen at plus or minus c, and you're going to say, well, what is c? c, it comes from c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Because we've got these tri this triangle set up like this, 
basically we've got a situation that comes close. It looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem, right? So we've got something very similar here. And c squared equals a squared, but instead of plus b squared, we've got a squared minus b squared. Okay. So c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Basically, the bigger denominator minus the smaller denominator, which in this case is going to be 25 minus 4. Now, for these formulas, you want to remember which formulas have just a or b and which formulas have a squared and b squared. Again, that's why I wrote out all of the formulas so you'll have a list of them. Make sure you get that copy from me. Um, c squared in this case is 21, so c is equal to radical 21. Now, for c, we specifically take the positive value, but the two foci here on our graph, there's y, there's x, it looks like this, it's basically a bathtub, and then I've got this foci is going to be negative radical 21, and this one's going to happen at radical 21. Okay, so those are the foci, and they're in this case, their formulas are radical 21 comma 0, because it's on the x-axis, and the opposite of radical 21 comma 0. Woohoo! Okay, now, next up, what's the eccentricity? Basically, the eccentricity measures how much of an ellipse this is. So, if we do have the formula right here, eccentricity is E equals C divided by A. So, the eccentricity equals C divided by A, which we can just look at here. C is radical 21. A is up here, it's 5, so it's radical 21 over 5. And we could work out what that equals. We could take a look and we could say, okay, radical 21 divided by 5, and that's going to give us something that is um, uh, very close to 1. It's like 0.9. Now let's look at this. This is C over A. So we've got a couple of things going on. First off, if the foci, if A squared and B squared are equal, so in other words, these numbers are the same. So if it's a circle, A squared equals B squared. That means c squared, which is a squared minus b squared, is zero. And so that means the eccentricity, which would be c over a, would also be zero. So eccentricity measures how wonky, how stretched out it is. We're pretty stretched out because a circle would be zero. Now, what would a, an eccentricity of 1b. What would it mean if c and a were equal? Well, if c squared were equal to a squared, that would mean b squared doesn't exist. So in other words, a would have to be really, 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 really stretched out, and b would be zero, basically, nearly zero. And that would have an eccentricity of 1. So how much of an ellipse this is, this number is going to tell you how stretched out it is. Okay, so our answer was 0.9. So there you go. There's the eccentricity. Woohoo. Next up, determine the length of the major axis. I should have been so quick to move this drawing. Let me kind of pull it in there so we can take a look at it. There we go. So in the case of an ellipse, we're going to have a major axis and a minor axis. And our major axis is basically the longer, oops, you can't see that, the longer 
of the two directions. So if it's a bathtub type, it's going to be how far apart are the two vertices on the x-axis. And if it's a shower type, it'll be how far apart they are on the y-axis. So in other words, in this case, oops, not pick that up. In this case, the major axis, this is the origin, right? So this is zero, zero. This is the point five, zero. This is the point negative five, zero. So what's the whole length of the major axis? Right there. And that's going to be 2 times 5, which is 10. Next up, the minor axis is going to be the shorter side. Side, it's not really side, the shorter width, perhaps. Um, the shorter axis. So this is the point zero two. This is the point zero negative two. So this length is two times two, which is four. So this is four up and down and 10 across. Oh, there we go, I've got an orange. So that's this one. That's the minor axis is how far that is. Okay, so all together, what does this ellipse look like? Let's take a look. I pretty much have a pretty good sketch there. I, um, you know, I could do a better sketch, I'm sure, but this, again, this is a sketch and this is not graph paper. So if you want a better, better graph, definitely use a graph paper. And if you want a beautiful graph, three, four, five, pull up Desmos or another online graphing app and use it to help you do a really beautiful job. So my ellipse is going to be something that looks a little bit like this. I've got my, um, there's my minor axis right there. It's four tall. This is my major axis right there. It's 10 across. And I have um, my center. This is centered around zero, zero. So how do we know it's centered around zero, zero? We know that because there's no X minus or Y minus. So we know it's not, it's not shifted. It's in its original like home place. Now, sometimes people want you to graph just the ellipse. Sometimes they would like you to graph the foci. So we should probably figure out what the square root of 21 is. So let's see, square root 21 equals, it's about four and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my foci right there. That point's gonna be negative, or the opposite of radical 21. And then the other foci will be, focus will be right here. And that will be radical 21 comma zero. So it depends, sometimes they want the foci, sometimes they don't. Woohoo, and there's my lovely graph. Okay, let's try another one. I know this is this has gone a little long, but I want to do one more problem. Let's try one more problem. This is gonna be dum 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 a shifted ellipse. Now, whenever you're shifting conic sections, you're gonna need to complete the square. This one is a particularly exciting one because this one has a value in front of x squared, which is an interesting situation. Now, there are a couple ways to um, deal with this. And what I would recommend is that this might be a way you might want to approach it. So I've got 9x squared minus 36x plus 4y squared equals 0. Now the y squared is not gonna be a problem. We see that we're not gonna have, there are no other y terms, we don't have to worry about that. But this minus 36x means that we do have a shift in the x's. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out the nine, not just from the x squared, 
but also from the third negative 36. So I get x squared minus 4x, and then I got four, plus 4y squared equals 0. Now I'm going to do this in a really interesting way. I'm going to complete the square inside of here. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to do the normal thing. 1 half of negative 4 is negative 2. And then I take the negative 2 and I square it. This is the usual completing the square process. But what I'm going to do now is instead of trying to deal with the insides and the outsides, I'm just going to stretch open the set of parentheses and I'm going to do something really weird and that is how do I add something to an equation without adding anything to the equation? And the answer is what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 4 and then I'm going to immediately subtract a 4 so that together this is 0. So I've added 4 and subtracted 4. That's fine. So now I'm going to write this as x squared minus 4x plus 4. This is, I'm going to separate out and then I'm going to give it its own. So I'm going to break it up into two pieces. 9 times the first three things and then 9 times just the negative 4 plus 4y squared equals 0. So I'm basically taking, I'm kicking the negative 4 out. This becomes negative 36. Now, this can be a really intimidating set of steps because if you haven't practiced these before, they seem almost kind of miraculous that they work at all. So it just takes a little bit of practice and always, if you get stuck, find me, find the tutors, ask lots of questions because this is, this is like the super advanced, most, most complicated, 